Our brothers, lovely ladies, guests, we are again open, about to open our service program awards. In so doing, I am honored and pleased to introduce our Worthy State Deputy Stephen E. Bolton. Supreme Knight's message, I'd like to uh, ask Rourke Galloway to come to the, uh, the microphone, please. Rourke has did a fabulous job putting together our souvenir program. Uh, this year, uh, we had 18 days to put this whole thing together, and uh, Rourke put together a souvenir program in 18 days. Uh, and he's going to let you know how we did on donations for Columbia Charities. So, Brother Rourke. Thank you very much for the state deputy, Lady Jane, Reverend Fathers, state officers, ladies, dignitaries, guests, and your ladies. Uh, thank you for the additional time here. A little bit off program, but I thought it would be interesting uh, for those of you to know a uh, little bit of background, how this program came about, but also how we stand at this point. Uh, so I hope our uh, were the chapter charities president Stephen um, Stephen Columbia Charities I'm sorry Stephen Peterson is online for this information as well so uh, as state deputy mentioned maybe about 18 or so days ago I'm um, uh, one evening kind of taking a breather and relaxing in my recliner and my phone starts ringing, I look at it, it says Stephen Bolton. I'm like, oh, <laughs> state deputy. What did I do? <laughs> so, of course, I stand up. <laughs> Worthy state deputy, what can I do for you? Worthy. You know, that's how, that's how he addresses you when you're on the phone. Worthy. <laughs> We need you to, uh, I understand that you're putting the state program together, and uh, we're going to do a little change on the ads this year. So instead of asking people to pay for ad space, what I'd like to do is send an invitation for people to place an ad, but instead of paying the state council, make a donation to the uh, California Columbian Charities. Okay, we can do that. So I draft an email to send out to the state and uh, state deputy looks it over and I get another phone call. State deputy, I stand up. Yes, sir. Um, we need to make sure that the invitation is going out to all the councils, all the assemblies, all the corporations, all the districts, and all the leaders in the state. And so, at this point, my head's kind of exploding a little bit because being a district deputy in San Diego, we have 158 districts I'm aware of. Each district is between three and five councils. So we have roughly 710 councils through the state, about 120 assemblies, 16 districts. The numbers are adding up real quick, right? Big book. So I'm thinking, in my mind, I'm putting together a phone book. <laughs> so I finish that conversation. I call up my uh, good friend and one of our co-chairmen, Gene Hayes. And I think I was a little excited in my tone when I said, do you know what the state deputy just asked me to do? He didn't know. <laughs> but, of course, Gene being Gene, yeah, so? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so 
So anyway, I'll get to the summary here. And you know, it's it's been an honor for me to be involved with the gentleman up here in the capacity that I do through the state newsletter and also through these projects. So um, I want you to know that it has been enjoyable for me. We had 31 ads submitted in response to our invitation. They break down as follows. We had three corporations, three district deputies, three assemblies, six chapters, and 16 councils, all submitting ads. And, I'm sorry? One family. One family, yes, you are correct. The family was kind of a freebie, though. <laughs> And um, State Deputy asked me to uh, kind of keep track of the donations that came in in response to this program. And there's a reason for that that he will explain to you in a moment. As of today, after bothering some of you a number of times to try and get a number from you, because I wanted to be as accurate as possible, but the number of pledged donations in response to the ads that were placed in the guide total $10,837.60. So I want to thank all of the um, Brother Knights who put their time into putting together their ads to send to me. You are all very compliant with the instructions that I sent out made it relatively easy for me to put everything together. And again, I would like to thank our state deputy and uh, certainly thank, again, the co-chairman, Gene Hayes, uh, Ed Hustis, and also our program director, Jim Larson, but also <laughs> operations director, Ken Rose. Thank you all very much. Told Rourke when we started this, as I said, uh, you know, I've uh, I've challenged the A and F committee. Like, how many times have we met this year? Like eleven times. So I challenged them at least eleven times. When I always remind them that every dollar we have isn't our money. As my state deputy, and I always remember this. My state deputy, where's Sunny said? He always taught us that it's the council's money. It's the council's money. Okay. And um, so with that, I told Rourke, whatever we did, I would go back to the a &F committee and I would challenge them to match it. Tell, challenge them to match it. So that's what I'm going to do at our next meeting. And uh, I'll report back to all of you. Okay? I'll report back to you that I know they will do what, uh, what uh, I ask them to do because uh, it's for a brother taking care of a brother. Okay, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And uh, what a great thing. Rourke, thank you, thank you so very much. So So ladies, God, ladies, you look so beautiful, all of you. Uh, I'm told uh, by my state chaplain that my wife did an outstanding job. Really, really easy to do a good job. <laughs> and she's been bailing me out for three years, four years, a long time. A while. Yeah, a, a while. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and I'd like to thank my technologies group for the next six weeks. Then they'll be your guys. Uh, <laughs> Brother Dave, Brother Dave, you are just a blessing. Uh, Brother Mark, a blessing. Greg, Tom, Ed, out there in. San Diego land, uh, and I know I'm missing somebody, but uh, you guys have allowed me to look at people in the face and to talk to them and to uh, communicate with them. Thank you. Yes, I knew I would forget somebody important. Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. So do we. Did we introduce Ryan to you know who? Yeah, we did. 
Okay. <laughs> Just trying to take care of one Catholic boy with a Catholic girl. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I shouldn't have went there, should I? All right. That's bold. It's bold. So, uh, <laughs> so, ladies and my brothers, uh, it's a distinct honor and a privilege for me to uh, introduce our new Supreme Knight, Patrick Kelly. Brother Ed, if you could play the video, please. greatest responsibility I will ever have. It is one I wholeheartedly embrace out of love for the order and our timeless mission of charity, unity, and fraternity. I must begin by thanking my predecessor. Carl Anderson led the order with distinction for two decades. Under his steady hand, the Knights reached heights our forefathers never imagined in membership, insurance, charity, and spiritual formation. I speak for myself, the men of your jurisdiction, and our brother knight worldwide when I say thank you, worthy past supreme knight, for your principled and visionary leadership. I am addressing you today from the birthplace of our order and the spiritual home of every knight, St. Mary's Church in New Haven. It is fitting to speak to you from this hallowed place, for this is the first convention season since the beatification of our founder. We now have the great joy of praying for the intercession of blessed Michael McGivney. By beatifying our founder, the church has, in a clear way, blessed and confirmed his vision. It is a testament to the difference Father McGivney made, starting with the men of his day. Those men were no strangers to challenge. The first night weathered a great deal of hardship, including a pandemic. They courageously laid down their lives by serving others. They tirelessly strengthened their families, parishes, and communities. They stood together as brother knights, and so did the men who followed in their footsteps down to our own day. We are the heirs of this proud tradition. In the beatification of Father McGivney, the Lord has not only confirmed where we have been, he has confirmed where we are going. Our Founder's vision endures in us, and we will carry it forward. When I look to the future, I see the night rising to meet the challenges of our time. I see us rising in charity, serving those who hunger and hurt near and far. I see us rising in unity, defending the Church in this difficult time. I see us rising in fraternity, strengthening bonds among our members while inviting a new generation into our brotherhood. I see us rising on every front, and I see this and more because of what I have already seen. My view of the night was formed as a young man, learning from the example of those around me. I am a third generation knight. My grandfather joined in 1915 before he left for World War I. My father, a naval officer, was a faithful member of our parish council until his death. I joined the order as a college knight, and I became more involved during my own years in the military and public service. At every stage, I have watched brother knights put their faith into action. And there is perhaps no better example than the past year. COVID-19 has been one of the greatest challenges we have ever faced. In a matter of days, our parishes closed, our councils and communities shut down, and our countries ground to a halt. I vividly recall Pope Francis's solitary address in St. Peter's Square in March 2020. Where thousands would have normally stood, the Holy Father stood alone. Where the voices of the faithful would have risen together in prayer, the Holy Father's voice rose alone. On that day, we saw a church, 
in a world in crisis. And in the days that followed, the Knights of Columbus confronted that crisis head on. We swiftly launched our pandemic initiative, Leave No Neighbor Behind. It ranks among the most successful initiatives in the order's history. We gave millions of dollars of direct relief and helped millions of people come through the worst of this crisis. We supported our brother Knights and their families, helping each other through economic hardships, the loss of loved ones, and the isolation of unprecedented lockdown. We supported our parishes, standing beside our priests and helping people safely access the sacrament. We supported our communities and fed the hungry, providing meals to struggling families and donating to food banks. We held blood drives in response to severe medical shortages. And through countless quiet and unknown acts of courage, our brother knights have come alongside their neighbors. As you gather for your convention, brothers in your jurisdiction and across the order continue to meet the needs of neighbors near and far. We recently sent much needed oxygen and medical supplies to Brazil and Peru, and now we are building an oxygen facility in the region. We will continue to save lives and meet needs worldwide amid the current crisis. While the pandemic demanded so much of our attention, I am proud to report that Brother Knights maintained strong support for all our long-standing and life-changing charitable initiatives. Through the Global Wheelchair Mission, we have now given more than 100,000 people the gift of mobility. Through Coats for Kids, we have now kept more than 800,000 vulnerable children warm during winter. Through our pro-life efforts, including the Ultrasound Initiative and the March for Life, we have saved countless unborn children and assisted mothers to make the courageous choice for life. In the Middle East, we have helped persecuted Christians reclaim their lives, rebuild their parishes, and restore entire towns. In the wake of earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, and wildfires, we have provided food, shelter, and medical supplies to families who lost everything. And thanks to you, in the last fraternal year, we donated more than $187 million and volunteered more than 77 million hours for charitable causes. As vaccine rollout promised a return to normal life, I am confident there will be a new outpouring of charity from you and all our brother knights. Just as we provide charitable support for our neighbors, we strengthen our families through our insurance program. During the pandemic, we issued more than $7.3 billion in new insurance. We have now set another record for insurance in force at more than $116 billion. Not only does our insurance provide financial security to our Catholic families, it is also an important engine that propels much of our charitable work. I am grateful to our agents for quickly and successfully adapting to a new virtual business model. Their hard work enabled our business to come through a very tough year. And I am just as thankful to all our brother knights for their dedicated service in this time of great challenge. Your witness is in keeping with our highest traditions. You have set the stage for the order to reach new heights in the days ahead. As we look to the future, we hope and pray the pandemic will soon be behind us. When that day comes, the Knights of Columbus must lead the restoration of parish and council life. The past year has made clear that the Mass is truly the source and summit of our lives as Catholics. By the same token, we have come to an even deeper appreciation for the bonds of brotherhood forged in our council. That is why we must devote our strength to fully reopening our parishes and returning to normal council activities as soon as it is safe to do so. To that end, I am pleased to announce the launch of our COVID recovery plan. Like our Leave No Neighbor Behind initiative, the recovery plan offers a high level of customization to fit the needs of your councils and parishes. It will provide concrete ways for you to help restore normal council life and help the men 
and families of your parishes emerge stronger from this crisis. I urge you to help your councils adopt the COVID recovery plan as soon as possible. The sooner they do, the sooner we will strengthen the order in the church while showing a new generation that the Knights have what men and families need. One of my top goals in my first year as Supreme Knight is to witness your work and impact firsthand. When travel becomes possible again, I will visit as many jurisdictions as I can. I believe good leadership starts with good listening. So I want to hear and learn from Brother Knights in your region and across the world. I am especially eager to see how you and all our Brother Knights are helping men grow as husbands and fathers. The men of today are struggling to keep their marriages healthy and their children happy amidst an increasingly hostile culture. Men, especially young family men, are looking for help. The Knights of Columbus must be there for them in their crucial vocation as husbands and fathers. This mission is personal to me as the father of three young girls. I pledge to focus on new initiatives and resources that will enable you to help the men of your parishes become better husbands and fathers. St. John Paul II affirmed that the future of humanity passes by way of the family. I believe strongly the same can be said for the future of the order. As we pursue that future, let us turn to St. Joseph for inspiration. Pope Francis has declared this to be the year of St. Joseph. Joseph is the patron saint of fathers, families, and the universal church. And he has a special place in the hearts of knights everywhere. In an address to our board of directors, Pope Francis called St. Joseph an admirable model of those manly virtues, quiet strength, integrity, and fidelity, which the Knights of Columbus are committed to preserving cultivating and passing on to future generations of Catholic men. And in this special year, Pope Francis has said that St. Joseph embodies creative courage. Creative courage, the Holy Father told us, emerges especially in the way we deal with difficulties, bringing out resources we did not even think we had. Given the challenges we face as a church and as an order, Every night is called to embody St. Joseph's creative courage in the days, months, and years ahead. And we should look not only to St. Joseph, but also to our beloved founder. Like us, Blessed Michael McGivney lived at a time of difficulty and crisis. The young priest saw urgent problems in his parish and community. He dedicated himself to finding unique solutions. Ultimately, his creative courage led him to found the Knights of Columbus. He knew that in this band of brothers, Catholic men could accomplish great things. Nearly 140 years have proven him correct. My brothers, we are Father McGivney's heirs. The Knights of Columbus has never been more needed. Our mission has never been more important. The world is crying out for men who look <coughs> up to God and out to their neighbor. That is who we are and who we must always be. Let us renew our commitment to charity, unity, and fraternity. And in pursuit of those timeless principles, let us muster all the creative courage we can. May St. Joseph and Blessed Michael McGivney intercede for us. And may the day soon come when I can see you in person and celebrate your good work and service to God and neighbor. Viva Jesus. What a great message. What a great message. You know, I, uh, I was so inspired by our retired Supreme Knight now, when he told us so many times that we must go to them. You know, that's been a part of my life for a long time, going out to them. And, uh, and we need to listen to that. We must go to them. Because a lot of people today aren't going back to Mass, aren't going back to church. 
And then you think about what our new Supreme Knight, this 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 man has told us. Uh, at least in a, in, in a couple of calls that I've been on with him, with a whole bunch of other people, he's always said to us that we just need to find a way. He's never told me all year what I couldn't do. Okay? And I've always asked you to just do and focus on what you can do, not focus on what you can't do. So when you go home to your councils, you go home to your parishes, for all of our sakes, it's time to go to them, wherever they're at. And it's time to bring them home to Mass. Okay? As we've always said all year long, the number one goal of the Knights of Columbus this year is to make can-do can councils. Can-do councils and healthy councils. That's our only goals. No numbers in those. If, uh, if we do that, everything else will take care of itself. So that's what I ask you to do. That's what all of us ask you to do when you go home is to embrace that we must go to them and we must bring them home to Mass. Okay. Please, please do that for us all. So I'm going to ask Jane to join me because uh, we're going to do something out of the norm today. Uh, it's been a different weekend, a different year, right? So normally we would give the uh, Council of the Year Award uh, at night, at the banquet. But uh, the uh, person here that's going to receive that award isn't going to be here tonight. And, uh, and I wanted to put it in his hands. Because uh, this past grand night, got your award, Larson? Yes, sir. We're calling the, the award Larson. <laughs> because that's what Hannah calls him <laughs> all the time. Larson. 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 So, So uh, let me tell you a little about this uh, past grand night for this council. I met him about a year ago at a special Olympics event in Bakersfield. And uh, I don't think he'd ever been to a special Olympics event before, but uh, we inspired that guy that day. We put him in charge of uh, handing out all the meals to the kids. And, uh, and uh, the, the look on his face, the smile on his face all that day, uh, you couldn't knock it off with a two before, okay? Uh, that's a contractor thing. So, uh, and he finished his job that year leading his council and inspired his council. And then they made him the chapter president. So he went from Grand Knight to chapter president overnight, okay? But when I took over a state deputy, that chapter was number 16 in our stats. Number 16, okay. Last month, that chapter was number one. And I believe, I'm the state deputy, so what I believe, we all got to believe, right? Okay. At least another six weeks, right? All right? Then we'll follow pretty boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Larson and Pretty Boy. Uh, all jokes aside, what this man has accomplished in the last year and a half is next to amazing. Uh, he left his council to lead the chapter. Uh, his council last year had a very challenging year, but he built a foundation. His, his council this year is at over 350% intake. They're working diligently with everyone in Bakersfield to help that community. He has a personal relationship with the people at St. Vincent de Paul. I was there with him when he delivered stuff over there after we did a special ethics event. He called me one day and he said, Worthy. I don't know why he called me Worthy, but I call him Worthy. Really he said, uh, St. Vincent de Paul called and they needed a uh, a case, not a case, a pallet of water. Pallet of water. That's cool. Cool. He said, so I just called every every grand night in Bakersfield and I told them all to bring me the money. And I said, cool. I said, did you get enough money? And he said, uh, yeah. I said, so how much was the pallet of water? And he told me. I said, all right. I said, I'm going to get the state council to send you a check. When they need another pallet of water, it'll be on us. Okay. And he delivered that pallet of water. And everything I've asked that man to do this year, he's done. Everything. And that's why he's one of the eight guys that will go 
the Supreme Convention list this year, uh, not because his numbers were great, but because he inspired his members to do what they needed to do to support Father. And he looked at the bigger picture of the Knights of Columbus that we all must look at, because uh, I'm not the leader of the Knights of Columbus. The man we just watched was the leader of the Knights of Columbus. It's my job just to make sure I remind you of what the vision is, what the vision is. For every parish in the country, or in the world, to have a council like Council 9530 in Bakersfield, California. <laughs> Chapter President of Kerninio Chapter, Brother Tony uh, Resnick. I said your last name. Right? Yeah. Take it home to them and uh, thank them for being bold. <laughs> thank them for being proud of who they are and what they are. God bless you. Great State Deputy, I want to thank you on behalf of the Kern and Yo chapter for this beautiful representation of, of the work that we do in service to God and service to one and all. And I want to thank you for inspiring me and inspiring our, our state council and inspiring all of our councils to follow the vision of this is Father Michael McGivney. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you. One for Tony's camera. Alrighty, so moving forward. Again, we're a little different, so uh, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Okay, so uh, so we're going to go to uh, the uh, the agent awards next, okay? Uh, but we're going to break away at any minute because uh, the family of the year is not here with us, okay? So we'll be giving that out virtually. Uh, we'll be delivering that uh, courtesy of the San Diego chapter officers. So. Thank you, worthy uh, secretary to be. And San Diego chapter president, Tom. All right, man. So you guys let me know when we're ready to, uh, to do that. And uh, till then, it's my privilege and honor to introduce to you another friend of mine, our uh, general service manager, or service agent, what do I call you, Steve? I can't remember that new title. Yeah. 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 My yeah. Sorry, yeah. general agent. I think they're, they're, they're calling us general sales managers now, but only in California. We're still general agents at heart. So remember, <laughs> but remember what you told me I could call you all this year. <laughs> all right? The deal we had. See a smile? Look at that smile. This is the man that represents Father McGinty's dream. Father McGinty's dream. Okay? It's an honor for me to stand in front of you to be your state deputy, but it's also an honor for me to stand in front of you and tell you that I have a life insurance policy for the Knights of Columbus. So does my wife, and so do my kids, okay? Not because it's cheap, not because it's the best, it's because it is the best, and they believe in everything that I believe in. 
And that's the people I want to give my money to. And that's the people you ought to be giving your money to. Yeah. Simple as that. So Brother Steve, the platform is yours. Thank you so much. What do you say, Jackie? Your field agents and general agents are fraternal insurance counselors. They have committed to a career in the service to members of the Knights of Columbus to dedication and ongoing education in the pursuit of caring for our members, helping them avoid financial hardship. They're not commercial insurance agents. They do not sell insurance for any other companies. They only work with our members and their families. That is a commitment and a sacrifice that they make so that they can be focused on working only with Catholic families that belong to the Knights of Columbus to help them secure their financial future through the vision of our blessed founder, Father Michael McGinley. And they do a great job. During the pandemic, they had to overcome a myriad of obstacles in order to continue to serve our members. So we'd like to recognize uh, some of those agents that were exceptional at helping their assigned members with their financial needs over the past year. Starting the list, I'm just going to fly through these just to give them some recognition. Uh, at 101.88% of his quota from the Gutierrez Agency, Arthur Aguilar. Business uh, from the Sandoval Agency, Ron Restano. At 104.07% of his quota from the Sandoval Agency, Jesse Martinez. At 110.36% of his quota from the Owens Agency, Jeff Story. At 110.81% of quota from the Gutierrez Agency, David Miller. At 112.93% from the Sandoval Agency, Bob Olivas. At 113.70% from the Gutierrez Agency, Paul Morissuti. At 116.80% from the Gutierrez Agency, Crudeño Natividad. At 124.06% from the Gutierrez Agency, Dion Dengzalan. At 132.69% from the Sandoval Agency, Joseph Cunningham. and 32.89% from the Sandoval Agency, Mark McHenry. At 134.87% from the Gutierrez Agency, Manuel Morera Guerra. At 139.76% from the Manfredos Agency, Steve Huddick. 4.25% from the Owens Agency, Jose Casaneda. At 155.92% from the Gutierrez Agency, Gregory Bronson. And now we'll move to the top 10. In number, uh, spot number 10 in, in the state of California, at 165.58% from the Senate of All Agency, Mark Hubert. At 167.98% in number 9 position from the Gutierrez Agency, Brian Montone. In 8th place, at 172.37% from the Contreras Agency, William Bauman. In seventh place, at 175.72% from the Sandoval Agency, Emika Agu. In sixth place, 
at 176.70% from the Owens Agency, Alfred Lu. Now, 
The difference about this one is, too, the fact that they're all going to be mailed out to you due to the pandemic and everything. Sorry, some of you might be here, but they're going to actually be mailed to you. At the directions of our state deputy. He says, I can use him to blame for any mistakes or anything I do today. Uh, so my head won't get flattened anymore. My wife doesn't have to hit me, so that's the best thing. Four through ten, but we'll be receiving certificates. And once again, they'll be mailed to you also. So let's get started. Oh, yes, my wife is here because, like Steve, he has a hard time spelling technology. Uh, so do I. And also, I have a hard time pronouncing technology. Because the Irish comes out to me, and sometimes she doesn't like that. So we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and move on to you. He priced at Christmas. Each poster winner is going to get a thousand dollars. I'm sorry. $100. I just want to see if you guys were listening. Father was going to say, make sure you sign it on the back. It's addressed to him. Many the father. That's for you on. Yes, that's for you both. We'll start with the five to seven year old division. And Kyle Birch. Angel of Queen of Yeah, you don't even say it again, sorry. Last year she did. And Kyle Birch, Queen of Angels, uh, 15, 7, 19, Grand Line, Clayton, Ball. <laughs> Elijah Jamie Wood, St. Anne, 8627, Grand Line, Frederick, Resendez. <laughs> 11 and 14 year old division. Giovanna Julian, Queen of Angels, 15719, Grand Line, Clayton, Bob. Now, our next set is the Substance Abuse Poster winners. Also, they'll receive a $100 gift card and also no award. Starting with the 8 to 11 year old division on alcohol awareness. Tatum Vitarly, St. Louis de Montfort, 1137, Grand Knight, Thomas Pitt Jr. 12 to 14 year old division, alcohol awareness. Michaela Fong, Holy Angels, 10948, Grand Knight, Rolando Morabe. Now, moving on to our 8 to 11 year old division for drug awareness. Gianna Urbano, St. Louis de Montfort, 1137, Grand Line, Thomas Dick Jr. Age 12 14 year old division, drug awareness. Cien Ruelas, Father Hesley, 2557, Grand Line, Larry Faria. Now we move on to our essay winners, also receiving a $100 gift card. <coughs> Keep Christ in Christmas essay winner. Eighth grade, the co winner. Jacob Jacobo, Santa Cruz 971, Grand Line, Timothy L. Poets. Eighth grade, co winner also. Jasmine May, Valle de Oro 9332, Grand Line, Daniel A. Cummings. Christ and Christmas essay winner for ninth grade. Benson Bastain, St. Brandon, 1238-3, Grand Knight, Ronald L. Remore. 12th grade winner. Ashley Robin, St. Joseph Basilica, 1596-5, Grand Knight, Bartolome Kinnard. Moving on to Catholic Storeship. SA winners, fourth grade winner. Axel Augustin, St. Victor, 4112, Grand Knight, Charlie L. Wilson. Fifth grade winner. Julia Aguya, St. Victor, 4112, Grand Knight, Charlie L. Wilson. Our sixth grade co winner. Uh, Alice Mattingly, St. Peter Martyr, 2956, Grand Knight, Robert J. Colon. Our sixth grade co-winner. 
Gabriela Hernandez, St. Peter Martyr, 2956, Grand Knight, Robert J. Colon. Our seventh grade winner. Christopher Page, St. Bonaventure, 6038, Grand Knight, George H. Brown III. Eighth grade co-winner. William Magny, Father Heslin, 2557, Grand Knight, Larry A. Freya. Eighth grade co-winner. Sophie Peter, Chief Solano, 3585, Grand Knight, Ralph E. Brown. Our 10th grade winner. Ethan Ngo, St. Ignatius of Antioch, 1258-7, Grand Knight, Herbert H. Sharp. Our 11th grade winner. Allison Arn, St. Ignatius of Antioch, 1258-7, Grand Knight, Herbert H. Sharp. Moving on to our scholarship winners. Scholarship, academic scholarship, I'm sorry. Melanie Kala, St. Anne's 9594, Grand Knight, Brian Taylor. <laughs> Hannah Osborne, St. Anne's 9594, Grand Knight, Brian Taylor. Academic scholarship again. Liliana McCarty, St. Angela, 9511, Grand Knight, Valentin Garcia. Gerardo Correa, Angel Gate, 1740, Grand Knight, Joseph Ungaro. Academic scholarships continue. Christina Marie N. White, St. Margaret Mary, 1533 9, Grand Knight, Gilberto Gonzalez. Christopher J. Carrillas. Uh, new Council of Development. Ac academic scholarships continue. Leilani Le Trihan Brave, Our Lady of Miracles, 11653, Grand Knight, James Thomas. Moving on to Jeremy J. Junk Memorial, Seminary and Religious Scholarship. Alejandro Marquez Mendoza, Pope John Paul II, Baca Valley, 4901, School, Mount Angel Seminary. Next support. <coughs> Bui Johnson, Garden Grove, 4581, School, St. John's Seminary. George Gomez, Father Lehenny, 5007, School, Queen of Angels Center, Priestly Formation. For a Father Joseph Gary Squire Scholarship. Mark Dever, 1740, Silk Circle 874, <coughs> School, University of St. Mary's. Moving on now to our Community Act. Activity Board. First place in Division One. St. Mel Council, <coughs> 1737 6, Grand Knight, David Blackham. Second place, I'm sorry, Division Two, first place. Father Lehenny, 5007, uh, Grand Knight, Ronald Galpa. <laughs> Second place. St. Clair of Assisi, 1548-9, Grand Knight, Kevin Ward. Third place. Santa Cruz, 971, Grand Knight, Tim Proix. These are your certificate winners. Next slide, please. Moving into Division Three. First place. St. Luke. 10-51-2, Grand Knight, Lance Attic. Second place. St. Michael's Com Catholic Community, 15-6-2-5, Grand Knight, Dominic Amadeo. Third place. 
La Puente, 4436, Grand Night, Mike Palace. Once again, these are your certificate winners. Next slide. Division four, first place. St. Angela Mercy, 9511, Grand Night, Valentin Garcia. Second place. St. Bonaventure, 6038, Grand Night, George Brown III. Third place. St. Kennedy, 14772, Grand Night, Salvador Carencia. Once again, certificate winners. Next slide. The continuation, there was a total of 10. Division 5, first place. Father Peter J.J. Juba, 4922, <laughs> Grand Night, Grand Night. <laughs> Second place. St. Anne, 8627, Grand Night, Frederick Resentes. <laughs> Third place. Father Frank Colasico, 4016, Grand Night, Jim Fiddler. <laughs> And uh, these are your certificate winners. All right, next slide. Then we're moving on to the next is culture of life activities. Division one, first place. This name's familiar. St. Mel, 1737-6, Grand Night, David Black. <laughs> Division two, first place. Our Lady of the Desert, 12055, Grand Night of Glover. Second place. Father Lehenny, 5007, Grand Night, Ronald Duffo. Third place. Reseda, 6584, Grand Night, Manuel Gallegos. Certificate winners. In Division Two, Division Three, first place. Saint Michael's Catholic Community, fifteen sixty two five, Grand Night, Dominic Amareo. <laughs> Second place. Saint Luke's, ten fifty one two, Grand Night, Lance Atti. Third place. La Puente, 4436, Grand Night, Mike Palos. Division 4, first place. St. Bonaventure, 6038, Grand Night, George Brown III. Second place. Valle de Oro, 9332, Grand Night, Edward Reedy. Third place. St. Genevieve, 14772, Grand Night, Salvador Carencio. Once again, your certificate winners. Division 5, first place. Holy Cross, 9969, Grand Night, Jean Hatton. Second place. Father Patrick Power, 4588, Grand Night, Walter. McKins. Third place. St. Louis Ray de Francia, 3162, Grand Night, Armando Mena. And your certificate winners. All right, moving on to faith and action. Faith and action. Faith and action. That's the same. I need to get closer here. That's so powerful. All right. Yeah. All right. Division one. First place. God, this name looks familiar. St. Mel, 1737. <laughs> Division two. First place. Father of the Henny, 5007, Grand Night, Ronald. Second place. St. Clair of Assisi, 15489, Grand Night, Kevin Ward. Third place. St. Joseph, 1629 3, Grand Night, Salvador Chabola Jr. 
Once again, your certificate winners. All right, Division Three. There's a typographical error here. It is first place, St. Michael's Council, fifteen six two five, Grand Knight, Dominic Amadeo. I, uh, no, I got in here. Set, set the updates. Unfortunately, I didn't get through. I'll let you go ahead. What, second place? Second place? La Puente, 4436, Mike Palace. <laughs> Secretary of Assumption, 4053 Dante Burgos. That was third place? I'm going to go ahead and announce fourth place. A Saint of Bonaventure, 6038, George Brown III. We can go ahead and forward through the slides to Division 4. All right, first place, Division 4. St. Genevieve, 14772, Grand Knight, Salvador Ojens, Arrest. Second place. Holy Family, 9213, Grand Knight, Frank Parashika. Third place. Arroyo Grande, 1375, Grand Knight, John Murphy. And your certificate winners? Division 5, first place. Fa Father Patrick Power, 4588, Grand Knight, Walter Massinus. Second place. Father Frank Colasico, 4060, Grand Knight, Jim Fiddler. Third place. Julio Vista, 7390, Grand Knight, Nathan Payne. And your certificate winners. Moving on to the Family Activity Awards. Division one, first place. St. Mel, 1737-6. Second place. Sagrado Corazon, 15030, one night, Francisco Gallegos. Third place. St. Jane Francis de Chantal, 166871, one night, <laughs> Division two. First place. Father Lehenny, 5007, Grand Knight, Ronald, Ronald Jacob. Second place. St. Joseph, 1629 3, Grand Knight, Salvador Chabola Jr. Third place. Our Lady of the Desert, 12055, Grand Knight, Al Glover. And your certificate winners? Division three. First place. You say first place. Oh, I'll say okay. St. Michael's the Catholic Community, 5625, Grand Knight Dominic Amadeo. That's us. Second place. St. James the Apostle, 1454 1, Grand Knight William Lagos. Third place. St. Joaquim, 1537, Grand Knight, Roberto Holguin. And your certificate winners for Division Three. Moving on to Division Four, first place. St. Genevieve, 14772, Grand Knight, Salvador Arrestio. Second place. St. James the Apostle, 1454 1, Grand Knight, Willie Lagos. Third place. Valle de Oro, 9332, Grand Knight, Edward Reedy. And your Division Four certificate winners. Continue on. Division Five, first place. St. Augustine, 9714, Grand Knight, Renee Luna. St. Anne, 8627, Grand Knight, Federico Vicente. Third place. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, 9665, Grand Knight, John Vance. And 
your your winners for Division Five. All right, best faith in action activity awards. Now, each one of in those divisions, for example, family, culture of life, community, and faith, each have the top winner in each category. One of the things after today, you might be getting this phone call, uh, and it's it's not a robocall or anything like that. But we need you to put together your packets because we're sending it off to. Supreme for the International Awards. So starting off with our best community activity, program in state, the wheelchair drive from? Father Peter J.J. Duba, 4922, Grand Night, Ron Lee. I know that council. <laughs> so, George Brown, are you here? No, but we got uh, Tom. Tom Collins. Oh, Tom Collins, right okay. Here. Tom, could you come up and not, not stir it? Just slightly? Right. Don't lose your connection, though. Yeah, we're all sure. dead. Our, uh, our chapter, Vice President Ron. Oh. Yeah. Grand night.